am a music teacher in the South Bronx and um, I'm just here to share some really awesome, really cool experiments that you can do at home. Hi everybody. Um, so uh, I, I figured I, I'd just start with a little song, you guys might know it. Here, oh, oh, oh wait, I got, <clears throat> I got to warm up. Every musician needs to warm up, right? Do re mi fa so. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little nervous, but that's cool. Hi guys, thanks for waving. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Here's a little song I wrote. I didn't write it, but. Here's a little song I wrote. You might wanna sing it note for note, but don't worry. Be happy. I think that's a little bit of what everybody needs today, uh, especially with, uh, hey guys, uh, with the, our circumstances. But um, yeah, so basically, uh, I was asked to do this Instagram live, uh, and I never even heard of the Lug uh, until last year. Um, and this thing is absolutely incredible. I love it. I play ukulele. I play, oh, I see my brother's here. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> um, yeah, I play ukulele and I play piano and I'm really looking forward to using this with my students next year. Hopefully, um, with budget cuts, uh, we are allowed to have music next year, but, uh, we, we don't know. Um, and, and my face is always like this. I'm always super, uh, high, high. Oh, my mom's here too. Oh my gosh. Hi mom. All the way in Florida. Um, so I figure I get this started. Um, if, if you guys want to comment, uh, where you're from and let me know where you're watching from, that'd be so cool. Um, but let's get started with some experiments that you can do at home. Uh, so let's see a family reunion. I love it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, I see a question here. Do do I do online Lug lessons? Well, you know what? The Lug is so awesome because it has an app that goes with it. I was playing some songs earlier today. Um, so that's one thing you can do for sure. My first uh, experiment for you guys, especially if you're at home stuck inside, is something I used to do as a kid, and my mom will definitely attest to this, is to make musical instruments out of things you have at home. So one of the things I would always do, I'm gonna put this away for a second. <laughs> uh, uh, is I would make like a shoebox type of guitar. So I have uh, right here a piece of Tupperware. Uh, and what it is, I put some rubber bands on it and it's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how well the sound will pick up, but you can kind of tune these to different lengths and um, me being a, a music teacher, I almost said science teacher, but I kind of do a little bit of both. Um, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> so taking one end of it and moving it closer, you're making this less tight across. So the note gets a little bit lower. I hope you can hear me. Can someone let me know if you're able to hear that? I'm not sure if it's translating or not. All right, and then to make it a higher note, you're just gonna stretch it. Nerds are the best. I agree, totally. So here's a little bit higher a note. So the cool thing about this is that you can tune these to any notes that you want. And the reason why I started with this experiment is because, uh, well, it works just like a guitar. And uh, one of the hardest things for students to learn about uh, I, I go over this all the time when I'm teaching ukulele in my classroom is that um, they don't know how to tune it uh, and they don't understand the concept. Yeah, I see a question, how do you tune it? So if you make a, for my case, a Tupperware guitar, if you move the, the, stri uh, the rubber band and make it loose throughout, less tense across, it's gonna have a lower note. And you can see actually the vibrations. That's pretty cool. Uh, and if you, I'm holding right here on the end, by the way. So if you grab it and pull really tight, hopefully I don't smack myself in the face. <laughs> it gets really, really uh, high pitched. And uh, in music, I was watching the other Lug Fest. Uh, you know, we call that the frequency. And you can actually see a difference in how the rubber band actually vibrates too. That's pretty cool. So 
Another thing that I um, love to teach my students is how sound works. Um, because of the, uh, the understanding of music, it, sound is not something you can necessarily see unless you're on maybe a computer or you have like one of those fancy devices. So I do an experiment with my students uh, and I think you're gonna like it. Let me just get my supplies. First thing I need is some pepper and it could be any pepper okay um i i know you're probably asking yourself what uh uh yeah well pepper is gonna allow us to see the sound waves the second ingredient <laughs> i feel like i'm on a cooking show right uh is a drum and the reason why i have a drum here is because this membrane here is going to actually vibrate and we're going to see, hi everybody new who's joining, hey guys, my name is, I'm a music teacher. Um, uh, the drum membrane here is going to allow us to see the sound. Hopefully I don't sneeze with this, but uh, I'm going to pour some pepper on the drum. Let me change the angle of this camera a little bit. Put it down a little bit so you guys can see the actual drum. Let me see, where's the, oh, that's the best place right there. All right, preheat the oven. Just kidding, don't put this in the oven, please. <laughs> All right, and uh, now the only thing left to do is, ooh, not sneeze. The only thing left to do is to actually put some sound in here. Now, this drum has a natural frequency that it wants to vibrate. I can make it vibrate in two ways. One, I can strike it on the bottom and you can see all that pepper bouncing around and another way that you can do is you could actually sing the note that the drum is pitched to uh, this is a little bit harder and I'm gonna um, apologize ahead of time because I'm gonna literally like sing into this so um, here we go watch what happens It does kind of look like I'm blowing onto it, but what these are, are these are, oh, that was a blowing, and I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> but what these are, these are the sound waves. We can actually see the sound waves. I'm total nerd, I love this. Now that was kind of like, I'd say a medium note. So let's see what happens if I sing a higher note. And I'm gonna say, like, I'm not an opera singer, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully uh, your ears can handle this. All right, here we go. Ooh, let's go higher. Ooh, you can see the outline of notes and or, of sound waves. And actually, if you notice, there's more. When I was singer, the, singing the lower note, there was a few, maybe two or three, but now we have one, two, three, four. We have more sound waves. And uh, that's why they call it the frequency because there's more waves going back and forth. And uh, this is an experiment. My students love it. You can actually recreate this at home. If you have a bowl and some saran wrap, you can put it on top of there and kind of see the sound. If you have a phone, you can put the phone up to the pepper and see what it does. Mm hmm Did you know that there's also some sounds that if you have water in your speaker, like the speaker of your phone, you can actually play a sound and it will get all the water out? I, I learned that uh, from my students. They showed me that. That's pretty cool. So this is the pepper in the drum. I hope you guys like that one. So first thing I get to do with my students is I, I teach them how, the, how sound works. And... It's a really important part of music because if you understand how sound works, if you understand how the frequency goes up and down based on the size of an instrument, for example, then you're gonna be able to translate that information to other instruments. I started playing on trombone. Trust me, you don't wanna hear me play it <laughs> anymore, but that instrument goes from very short to very long. And I noticed that when I put my hand out and made the instrument longer, the note got lower. So the same thing goes for the strings on the guitar. If you make the note, if you make the string longer, 
it's going to be a lower note. If you make it shorter, it's going to be higher note. Um, so let's go on to our next experiment. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, be sure if you just joined, um, my name is Melissa Salguero. I'm a music teacher, uh, also a certified nerd, <laughs> science nerd. I teach music and science. Um, and I'm just going to be sharing with you guys, um, some experiments that I do with my kids. Um, and also... I know that on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Luke said to bring your own carrot because we do have a little um, experiment to show you how to make a carrot recorder, which is so cool. It's one of my favorite experiments. I think I probably said that about every experiment so far, right? <laughs> Sorry, but this is a carrot recorder and you can hear it. Well, let me adjust it a little bit. Hmm. Sometimes this happens. There it goes. You know, that's a that's another thing I want to mention is that sometimes, uh, with science especially, sometimes things don't go as planned, and you have to kind of just go with it. So I taught my kids, uh, my students, to say one thing whenever they're faced with a challenge or something I tell them to say it's cool uh, so if they get knocked down if they are frustrated with practicing I just say it's cool you guys um, so I'm seeing some new people here hey guys thanks for waving so we're gonna do this in a little bit um, and if you guys have some questions you guys can put it there I have a few questions asked from before and I'll try to grab them um, as we're going here um, but let's talk about seeing sound a little bit more because with the pepper and the drum it's pretty cool but now let's get a little bit close up so I'm gonna adjust this camera and I'm gonna bring you with me because we're gonna do this close up here we go so I have my assistant here <laughs> so I have here some water inside of this Tupperware and what this is is a tuning fork and the tuning fork, when I strike it, well, there's a, trying to get close up here, there's a rubber tip and there's a metal, uh, plastic tip. If I hit it with the met, uh, I keep saying metal. If I hit it with the plastic, it's going to sound very bright. If I hit it with the rubber, you can barely hear it, but it is still resonating. So I'm going to try and get the right here let's get the camera to focus you won't be able to see this vibrating here when I strike it and I don't know if you could even hear it but we're gonna be able to see it so let's get close right here that should be good up a little bit all right I'm gonna strike the tuning fork and then put it into the water and we'll see what happens one a two, three. And hopefully you guys can see that. I'm gonna I'm like breaking my neck over here trying to see the camera, but let's try again. Let's see if it, you guys can see it. Let me know if you can see it. There, I just splashed me in the face. It just, it just got me in the face. Yep, uh, warning, uh, you're in the splash zone, okay? I'm gonna put this camera back here. <laughs> Oh, my mom is asking, where do I teach? Mom, you should know that, okay? All right, mom? <laughs> Just kidding. Mom, uh, yes, I'm so happy you're here, mom. So what happened was the tuning fork was vibrating, and when it touched the water, the vibrations were sent through the water. Sound is one of the most incredible things because it can travel through air, can travel through water it can travel through solids um, and I'll show you an example of it traveling through solids actually I'm gonna use the Lou guitar in a second so let me get rid of this I really do feel like I'm in a cooking show right now <laughs> so using this tuning fork we are going to do something really cool we're gonna send the sound all the way down through the bottom of this into the guitar and out this hole so that you guys can hear the tuning note. I sure hope this works. All right. 
Actually, let me let me ask you guys. Do you think this will work? Do you think that maybe the the Lou guitar maybe it won't travel through? Do you think what do you guys what are you thinking? Will it work? Will it not work? I well, I know the answer obviously, but um okay. So, we're going to strike it. Place it on the very bottom here and we're going to see what happens. One, two, three. That sound is is coming from inside of the guitar. It is so cool. When I take it away, it stops. Listen again. Now that is <laughs> that is incredible. You can do this with a lot of things and one of the experiments we do with my students is we take a tuning fork and we try different objects to see if it will resonate, if it will actually go through. Um, I have this, this, this is like a coffee press, but it's actually for the next experiment you can see here. Do you think, this is made of glass. Where do we get a tuning fork? Um, a tuning fork you can buy uh, on Amazon or a music store. Oddly, not odd, but uh, some musicians use this and they'll actually hold it to their body to be able to hear the note. So they'll strike it and they'll place it on their temple. They'll place it, some people even do it on their teeth. I wonder if you'll be able to hear it if I put it on my teeth. Should I try it? All right, I guess I guess we're gonna do it. Here we go. <laughs> All right, I'll put it on my teeth and hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Let's see. <laughs> you guys got a really nice view of my uh, uh, my pores there. Not sure if you heard it, but I definitely heard it because it was vibrating my teeth. And it went all through, it was like if I had a, a tuner in my head. So that's pretty cool. So tuning forks, let's try it on this glass. It's not made of, it's not made of wood like the Lug. It's not made of bones. Hmm, let's see. Sure enough, it does go through. Um, and this is, this is something so cool because we, when we do this in the classroom, we go around and we find all these different things that can produce sound. Um, and I wonder if, you know, if it can produce sound like that, it would probably make a good guitar. Uh, let's see, so the solid surfaces act as an amp. Yeah, basically. Yeah, same thing, even uh, with the drum, if I add it here. Let's do that. It's a little bit soft, but you can definitely hear it. So um, this is something I got. This is a, a tone box, right? So like, it will amplify. So, <laughs> so good, you went to the next topic. So if you understand how amplification works, this is exactly, exactly that. So I'm gonna take the tuning fork, place it into my tone box. You see it's empty, but what this is gonna do, it's gonna take the vibrations that are traveling down and it's gonna focus them all in here and the box is going to push them out, push them out of there. So you'll hear it much louder now. There you go. Now, this actually came in a set of two because when you're, when you're, talking about the frequency of notes, right? When you're talking about the vibrations, vibrations can actually travel. We know this, but they can actually also make something else vibrate. And I have a twin here. All right. I have a twin. The only difference is I put a hair tie on this. Okay. Similar if you play guitar, similar to when you put your finger and it's not in the right spot, 
pot of the frets. And it's kind of like, sounds like this. I wonder why it sounds like that. Well, it's because the string can't vibrate. So if, it's kind of like muting. So what we're gonna do, check out the difference. Muted, bink, versus free flowing, right? Now, let's make the sound travel from this one to this one. And I promise you, there's no special effects. I promise you that uh, I'm not, this is just pure science here, you guys, okay? So I'm gonna position it right around here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strike this one, and then I'm gonna mute it very quickly. And the remaining sound that you hear will be from this one. So check this out. Hopefully you heard that, but the sound is traveling from this tuning fork and it's actually vibrating on this one. They're the same frequency. That's why when I sang into the drum earlier, hi everybody who's waving, <laughs> so cool. Um, that's why when I sang into the drum, I was singing the resonant frequency, the right, I was singing the right note for that. Now, um, I, I love it. I love this. Oh, now my brother's here. So I, my two brothers here and my mom. Wow. It really is. Okay. So how and why this, when it's traveling, it's a, a resonant frequency is when it's the same one and they just kind of, they, they, they groove together basically. And what you have is the transferring of the vi vibration objects that, move at a certain frequency. Not every, for example, not every drum is going to vibrate at the same frequency that I was singing at earlier, but every glass has a different frequency. Let me show you an example of that. <laughs> Almost knocked over my props. But uh, this, you can hear that. That note is the frequency of this glass. And um, like I showed you guys earlier, my carrot, let's see what the frequency of this one is. Oh my, is it the, so is it the same? <laughs> Did I tune my carrot to the, the my coffee press? Okay, it's pretty close. That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh well. Well, we're gonna we're gonna learn how to make this in a little bit. But I do want to show you a few more experiments that you guys can do at home. And uh, remember, if you guys want to uh, put any questions there, please do. Um, one of the questions earlier was, um, how, how are we teaching music online? And as you can imagine, it's really difficult. It's, that's still vibrating. <laughs> it's really difficult. Music is one of those subjects that it doesn't transfer well online. And the reason is because music is a subject where you participate, where you you grow by learning and it's an E. The carrot and the thing is an E. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> um, but music is one of those things that you, you learn by doing. And my whole life I have learn by doing. I've learned by making mistakes. And that's one of the things that I really, really love about teaching music is because we learn through mistakes. And nobody ever picked up an instrument and was um, perfect the very first day. Um, it takes time and it takes practice. And I think that you have to be a really mentally strong person. Like you must have that grit to not give up when you're playing an instrument, um, because it is so easy just to stop. It is so easy to, for my students just to say, oh, this is too hard. I can't play this song, it's too difficult. And if you don't have somebody there encouraging you and pushing you, you might just give up on it. So um, it's my hope as I'm teaching my students, 
that they learn not to give up and they learn to struggle through and it's okay to struggle. So that's one of my hopes as I'm teaching my students, but it doesn't transfer well online. Um, you know, you see a lot of these choruses doing group ensembles over Zoom and that's a really hard thing for some music teachers to do and um, it has been really difficult. Uh, but one of the great things about it is that social media has allowed us to reach a huge audience and um, just spreading the word about how amazing music is. And I'm going to use this second just to to let everybody know that with the the pandemic, music programs and extracurriculars are going to suffer next year. And I really hope that everyone who's watching right now will help support their music programs uh, when, when it's time to go back to school. I'm in New York, so that might not be for a very long time, but I, I really hope that everybody um, lets people know, lets everybody know that uh, music is important. It's one of those things that we shouldn't cut from our schools. Speaking of schools, I want to show you one, uh, I have two more experiments for you guys. Uh, one of them has to do with dun, da, da, dun, one of these. And uh, does anybody know oh, what's inside of this? Let's see. We're going to find out the age of our audience right now. Anybody know what this is? I'll give you another, I'll give you another look. What do you got? What do you got? <laughs> I'm hoping some of you guys will know what this is. It is a record. Um, and uh, the reason why I'm showing you guys uh, this is we've been talking about, yes, nice, nice job. Um, we've been talking about helping your, your, my students and what I do to help them understand music. So once we've seen it, once we've learned how it operates, now we get to see the application of it. And one of the things that you can do with the final record, and I'm really, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time because you should not do this with a, a record that you like, okay? You should probably do this experiment with um, an old record, maybe go to um, a thrift store and actually get something that, it's okay if you scratch it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to show you. I have in my hand a needle, and on. Let me do it. Let me do what the YouTubers do. Hold on. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see? Okay. <laughs> it's a sewing needle, regular sewing needle, and I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to ask you, can you hear this? Um. No. Why? Because the vibrations are so soft, you can't really hear it. So what we need is a way to amplify it. So what we've discovered so far is you can use other objects to amplify sound. And I just so happen to not have another object. It's a piece of paper that I've rolled up and taped into a cone shape. And I'm going to place my needle at the very end of it, just like that. And you can see there. Now I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's see if you can see my hand as well. Can you hear this? That's what my fingerprints sound like. <laughs> yeah, so what this is doing is taking all the little sounds and it's amplifying it. Now we can actually play yeah, a do-it-yourself turntable. This is a very high-tech way of doing it. Um, I'm not sure where you can find this tape, but I'm just kidding. Um, this is very high-tech. Uh, so let me put this here. We need a way for the... Let's see if we can get down a little bit. There we go. Yes. All right. So I'm going to put another record actually on the bottom so that we have a kind of consistent place for it to turn. And I'm going to use a, this is just a mallet. I'm going to put the mallet through 
the record hole. I'm going to line up the record here. So that way we have a smooth surface for it to actually turn. All right. Now we got our turntable. I mean, I hope you guys like this. So <laughs> it is a little wobbly, but that's okay. So now I'm going to take my, my little contraption here and I'm going to see if I can line it up. You want it to go with the direction that you're turning it. You don't want it to be going against it or else you're really going to scratch it. But let's try this. See if we can get this going. Okay. Are you guys ready? I hope this works. I'm just kidding. I know it's going to work. Of course. This is science. And when you understand how music works, then you understand. When you understand how sound works, you, you know things are going to work. So here we go. I'm going to place it. What song do you guys want to hear? Track one, track two. <laughs> All right. Let's see. You can hear a little bit. <gasps> when that happens, yeah, okay, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. Let's try it like that. Whoa. What do my kids say? They say, it's cool, and we keep trying. So I'm saying, it's cool. Let's try to get a, a sound out of this. And this is also why I said don't use a record that you um, really like, because it is a little bit uh, tricky. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get a little bit of a better, a better recording here. Oh, my whole setup's falling down. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Oh, you did, you did hear it. Nice. Yeah, it, um, actually, let me see. Hey, um, can you come hold this over here? Let's see if it will. It's got to go down angle. Yeah, okay. It's a two-person turntable now. Hold on. Thanks for being patient, you guys. All right, here we go. All right, it might not go because we're just, I had the perfect angle earlier, but <laughs> it's looking like I, uh, I, I'm having difficulties with it here. One more try. One more try. Let's see. Ah, <laughs> all right, all right. That's all I'm going to do on that one. But it is, let me just, so sorry, extreme close-up. It is a pretty cool experiment to try, especially if you have um, some old vinyl around that, again, not one that you really enjoy or maybe a collector's item or something, but um, it's definitely really cool to see uh, sound coming from vinyl. And then you talk about, with your students, you talk about how those little grooves are actually very, very microscopic bumps. And all this needle is doing is just amplifying those bumps. So, um, really, really cool experiment. And now, I'd like to show you how to make a carrot recorder. Yes, yeah, you know, this thing that you, you probably all um, have maybe played once in your life. Um, a carrot recorder. <laughs> all right, so let me just get this out of the way. And I'm going to get my uh, kitchen utensils ready. Cooking with Miss Salguero. <laughs> Let me see what the best angle here is. Maybe bring it closer. Oh, we can do, oh, this is fancy now. Now we're getting fancy, you guys. All right, so the one that I already made, and if you haven't seen it yet, here's how it plays. That is a carrot recorder. 
the reason why I do this with my students is to show them how this works so that they can experiment at their house. So if you look at a recorder, you can see some similarities. We have the window, which is where the sound is actually being produced because the sound goes in through the wind way. The sound is pushed up in this little hole right here and then it actually splits right here. You can see it a little bit better if I show you like this. The wind from your mouth splits and that creates a vibration. And without this little piece in here, all right, it will not, it will not play. This piece is so vital and you can see it's actually sloped in a way to speed up the air. And if it's not there, it won't play. But now it's back. So let me show you how to make one of these, okay? Um, the first thing you need is a carrot, right? The bigger, the better, if you can. Uh, the second thing you need is a power drill. Okay. <laughs> I understand that this uh, is a little bit unusual, and I will say to you, if you do this at home, let me get, oh, there we go. If you do this at home, you need some supervision, especially if you're a youngin. So don't do this at home unless you have some supervision, but we're going to get a little messy now. So I'm going to take the carrot, and I'm going to drill a hole right in the top. Let me cut a little bit so I have a better surface to drill into. Oh yeah! Oh, it's spraying the camera. Oh yeah, splash zone. So sorry. Oh man, this is this is getting really messy here. All right, uh, almost. I didn't say this would not be messy, okay? <laughs> All right, so I've made my hole into the recorder, well, the carrot, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually cut a straight line down about an inch from the top, and then I'm gonna do an angle up. About an inch in, Cut straight down. You don't want to crack the carrot at all, okay? Now, I have my straight cut. Now I'll do the angle cut. Careful again because you don't want to crack the rest of the carrot. You just want this piece to come off. And if you can see here, I didn't cut deep enough to where the drill was. So I'll go in a little bit deeper. And there we go. That's probably the most important thing right there to make sure you have a nice cut. Um, I drilled deep, just probably about this far. And again, the further you, if you go and you, and you break through the skin, it might affect how it sounds. But you basically want it intact, kind of like a, um, a, um, a wind, uh, what is that? What is that called? A, a, the pipes, Pamphlet? the wind pipes, Pamphlet? pan flute. <laughs> yeah, pan flute. I know my instruments, you guys. I know. All right. The next thing is I'm just using a baby carrot because it's just about the size. So if it doesn't fit in. Try another one, and you want it to be kind of snug, but not too snug. Let's find a good one here. That's two. Oh, that one might work. Oh, this one's perfect. Okay, so from here, what you do is you're going to cut at a diagonal to make the kind of the ramp that your air is going to go up. Just like that. So you can kind of see it here at an angle. <laughs> I would, if somebody makes a pipe organ with uh, 
carrots. I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to take it. And this is also important. You want the ramp to go towards the bottom. So there's the hole. Put it towards the bottom. And I'll show you. Ooh. Uh, finding the right angle here is hard. All right. So, oh, you can see a little bit of air there. Let's see if it works. It might not, it might not be in the right position, but all right. So when that happens, it just needs to be adjusted. And we can move it around. Almost there. Almost. I can see it. Oh, this carrot is a higher pitch than this carrot. Oh, wait, no, it's lower. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this is how you can make a carrot net, a, well, carrot recorder, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's a really fun experiment to do, uh, especially if you're going to cook some soup or something, because then you can use this <laughs> and put it right in the soup. Um, mm, and it's delicious. Uh-huh. So if you... Uh, if you want a little extra snack or you're just hungry, you can just eat your instrument. <laughs> My students love it, and um, it's a really great experiment for them to see. Sorry, shouldn't have eaten that carrot. <laughs> but it's a really cool experiment because it shows my kids that different things can be instruments that aren't usually instruments. And... Um, I, I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, so, if you guys, uh, there were a few questions. What did I do with the paper? No. I had a few questions printed out from earlier. But, <laughs> if you guys want to know anything, you guys can ask me about, um, you know, uh, my teaching. Uh, I noticed that uh, one of the things said, yes, I was on the Ellen show. Yeah, that's true. I was on the Ellen show. I went to the Grammys. That was really fun. Um, but uh, honestly, uh, it's really cool. And if you guys have ideas for at-home instruments, I would love for you to send them to me. I would absolutely love to try them. Any sort of experiments. I'm such a nerd when it comes to that. So... Uh, <laughs> I would definitely do it with my students. Um, so uh, really, I'm just going to wrap this all up and I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. It's been really, really fun to do this live. And um, <laughs> it's so cool. Um, here's a question. What's the impact of the music program on your students? Yeah, I started the music program. Okay. Uh, the impact of the music program has been life changing. I would definitely say um, it has taken kids that are not interested in school and kind of like disengaged to a hundred percent participating. Um, it's changed their life and it's changed my life. Um, behavior problems uh, have improved because we started a band program and that band program, students were coming an hour before school started. Oh, I see some little blue hearts. Do you see that? Oh, that's cool. Little blue hearts. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm very distractible. Is that a word? But, um, yeah, music program has really, really, really changed the life of my students and my life as well. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure to teach them and be their teacher. Uh, yeah, uh, but I think I mentioned before, like, I'm honestly really scared with budget cuts coming up. Um, it's, it's kind of like uncertain right now if they'll have music in our school or even if they'll have PE at our school. Um, uh, it's honestly really terrifying because music saved my life when I was little. I joined the marching band and it, I absolutely am who I am today because I went through the music program uh, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do the things and have the mental toughness to do what I do without that music and, and just practicing. Yes. 
We will definitely get through this uh, together. What can you do to help? I would definitely say, you know, reach out to your superintendents in the areas that you you live in your schools. Um, I'm not sure how it is uh, in other countries, but in the U.S., you know, each school has a superintendent that's in charge of uh, the districts. So write them emails, write them letters. You can call them. Uh, let them know how important music is. You know, you can always find out what what what's going on in music. I, I always use the hashtag Music Matters because it really does. Music matters. And um, I think throughout all of this, uh, the world is kind of realizing how important teachers are because, uh, you know, um, education is the thing that's going to help us all through this and getting smarter, learning something new every day. Um, oh, my mom says my students are so lucky. Thanks, mom. Oh, you're going to make me blush, mom. <laughs> So um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can at me um, at salgaromusic.com. Uh, well, that is my website, salgaromusic.com. But yes, music matters. Nice. You can, uh, all my social media is at salgaromusic. Um, you know, add me, uh, follow me, and I'll follow you back because I love interacting with people who are uh, music supporters. All right. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I can't wait to see the rest of Lug Fest. Uh, I want to just thank Lug right now because this has been one of the coolest things. I have a lot of cleanup to do, as you can probably uh, tell, but it was awesome. So thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thank you guys.